Hey guys, Forex here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a faulty Rocktech external floppy disk drive for the Commodore Amiga. Now I'm 90% sure I know what the fault is with this external floppy drive. Uh, what I'm going to do now um, is hook it up to my Commodore Amiga and show you uh, exactly what's happening. Now I've got my Amiga 500 out. I've hooked up the faulty drive to the Amiga 500. I've got Workbench ready to go. Now, good news, I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear the Amiga click coming from the drive. So that tells me that the Amiga and the external drive are actually communicating um, but watch what happens when I insert disk everything goes crazy <laughs> can you hear that noise and if we look at the workbench we can see it's saying the disk is bad now let me just turn that off because it's not a very nice noise uh, to listen to. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, get the drive on the bench uh, and explain uh, what the problem actually is. Now you've seen what the issue is, let me explain um, what the actual problem is. Now in these Rock Tech drives, there is a Citizen floppy disk drive and it uses a rather old technology to spin the spindle motor that spins a disc and it's belt driven um, so instead of it being a, a direct drive disc um, it's a belt driven disc and um, as you'll see when I get in there I'll show you um, what happens over time is that belt either loses its elasticity um, and then the, the drive motor that spins the belt then spins the spindle that spins the disc can't grip the belt anymore and it just freely spins that's what that high pitch sound was uh, it's just the motor free spinning um, or the belt just totally disintegrates um, but I'm not going to find out that until I get in there um, so it's either it's either lost its elasticity or it's just totally disintegrated so uh, yeah let me get in this thing and we'll see if we can fix it now to get into this external drive it's actually very easy there's just six screws I need to remove there's one here one here one here one here one here and the final one is here remove those screws and I should be able to slide the front of the top case off so I've removed those six screws what I want to do now um, is slide the top case forward now if I keep going there we go, we should see the ribbon cable and I can take out the drive and I should be able to lift the top uh, with the drive out. Now to get the drive out of the top case, it's actually very easy, there's no screws, it's just push fitted in there. All you do is just push it out the top of the case like that uh, and then we have the drive ready to work on. Now to get the top lid off the floppy drive we have to remove this screw here and then if we look either side uh, there's a little catch on this side and there's a little catch on this side and what you'll be able to do then uh, is just take the lid straight off. As you can see we're in the drive here's the motor uh, that spins the belt. I can already see the belts really slack um, and that's what the problem is and here's the spindle that spins the disc just here I'm moving it with my finger and it, if you look you can see the belt flexing in there it's uh, it's proper it's proper gone um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take away uh, this portion here with the actual motor in there uh, and then I can fit the belt uh, and to do that there's one screw here, there's one screw here, and then I'll be able to lift this forward like that and 
get some better room to fit the new belt. And we found the problem straight away. Here's the belt. Yeah. Belt snapped. Might as well pull it out. Um, it feels uh, it feels sticky, um, which yeah is never a good sign. That's uh, always a sign that it's um, it's going bad. So yeah, we're gonna have to fit a new belt. <laughs> now this is not a, a fun job to do. So yeah, I'll get the new belt uh, and then see if I can put it in here. Here's the new belt that I'm going to install. What I'll do is I'll show you now uh, where I got this new belt from. And um, this is where I got my belt from. I got it from eBay, a seller called Modern Radio Bolton. And the belt description is flat section dry belt cassette 71 millimeters times 0.6 millimeters times 2.8 millimeters and yeah all in all it cost me three pound 25 including postage <laughs> here comes the fun part uh, time to fit the new belt uh, now this is going to be a real pain and sadly i won't be able to film it and i'll show you why um, if you look down there can you see a little flywheel um that's a tensioner um, so you know I've got to feed it down like this and then bring it round and then come back up again uh, it's going to be an absolute pain in the backside to fit <laughs> yeah so I won't be able to film that um, but yeah I'll get this new belt fitted in and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like afterwards that's the tricky part done um, I'll show you the, the most tricky part of it um, was that little bit there can you see where the tensioning wheel is um, you have to get the belt behind that wheel uh, and then around this actual spindle just here uh, that's the tricky part um, what I need to do now uh, is fit the motor back and then get the belt, belt uh, around the motor so yeah I'll go ahead and do that and then come back and show you what it looks like afterwards That's the new belt fitted, as you can see, it just goes down there, comes all the way down here, goes around this spindle motor and then travels back up. So yeah, that's that uh, nice and newly fitted. What I might as well do now uh, is take five minutes and give this driver a good clean while I've got it open. I'll also take some IPA and clean the heads. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that, and then come back. I replaced the belt, I gave it a good clean inside, I've cleaned the heads, it's had a good service. Let's get this all back together and give it a test. And we're all back together. Now I'll be honest with you guys, this is the next day. Uh, the reason for that is because I retro brighted the front face, the flap and the eject button uh, and as you can see uh, it looks almost new <laughs> so that came out quite nice um, there's a few dings and scratches um, on the actual outer case but you know it's war wounds <laughs> and I also cleaned up the cable as well so yeah let's get this hooked up to my Amiga 500 uh, and give it a test And as you can see, we're all back together. We've got the external floppy drive all set up. Now, the easiest way to test it um, is to use a program that we're all familiar with from back in the day called XCopy. Now, the way you test it is you do a format of the disk, uh, and then when you've done that, uh, you do a check disk uh, to make sure the drive uh, can see uh, all the lovely nice blank disc so yeah uh, I'm just going to do that so I've got a blank high density disc here now yeah I can format uh, high density discs with this drive put that in there now what I want to select is DF1 I don't want to use uh, 
DF0, that's my internal GoTech drive. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Tools, Format, and I'm going to click Start, and it's asking me to name the disk. So I'm just going to call it Dave the Dave the Floppy. <laughs> why not and it's asking me what I want to format it as I'm going to go Amiga DOS so I'll let do this As you can see, the drive is working fine. And there we go. That's the disk formatted. What I want to do now is change the source and I want to do a check disk. Now, this will tell me if the drive's working okay. If I get all zeros, uh, that'll tell me it's working okay. Looking good so far. Winner, winner! <laughs> we got a fully working external floppy drive. What I'm going to do now uh, is boot up into Workbench and see if we get an appearance from Dave the Floppy. <laughs> As you can see, I booted up into Workbench. I've got Dave the Floppy. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't resist. Let's pop it into the external floppy drive and see if Dave the Floppy makes an appearance. And there he is, straight away. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Dave the Floppy. <laughs> so yeah, there you go guys. Got a fully working external Amiga floppy disk drive. I hope you like the video guys. Please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe or the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Winner, winner. It's Dave the Floppy everyone. <laughs> catch you next time guys.